I'm Lucas Sin. I'm the chef of Nice Day Engines Kitchen. Today we're at our first location of Nice Day on Bleecker Street in New York City. I started cooking in Hong Kong, where I'm from. Picture this, right? A bunch of 16-year-olds taking ourselves too seriously, playing restaurant for a little while. And that was the first time I really understood that it was also interesting to start telling stories through food. And then before you know it, it's my career. I cooked for a long time in Japan. I kept doing pop-ups when I was in college. So I've always been excited about how different cultures intersect over food, for example. That creative spirit, plus an excitement about Chinese food in America, is probably what got me to where I am now. It starts with all the stuff that's expected of us that we have on the menu. But recently, we have also thrown a bunch of silly things on the menu. All these like funky, weirdo stuff that wasn't and isn't really supposed to be part of the American Chinese canon. But it is quite a lot of fun. It kind of stands for how we're trying to approach American Chinese food with like a smile on our faces and a sense of optimism. There is a lot of support in general in the New York City food community. I'm very, very grateful to be cooking in New York City, even though there has been a pandemic, and I'm very, very grateful for the people that I get to surround myself with. We are at Deluxe Meat Market in Chinatown, the one-of-a-kind supermarket that is a combination between a butcher's counter, a fishmonger, a barbecue, a smoothie bar, and also a farmer's market vegetable stand. It's insane. I get a lot of my barbecue meats from here, and also I source a good amount of raw meat from here because they do an excellent job with the butchery. Chinese butchery tends to break down big pieces of meat into smaller subdivisions. Pork shoulder, for example, isn't just pork shoulder in Chinese cooking. You can't get these cuts of meat at Western supermarkets, so I always make a point of coming down here. This supermarket has been here for so long. They've gone through so much trial and error and so much experimentation to make sure that they are doing the best. You can always count on freshly cut meat. And they get deliveries almost every single day. Their vegetables, honestly, are also a step above the rest. It's a very different approach to identity. It's a very different approach to business as well. I really, really respect the robust family-built businesses that are cornerstones of the Chinatown community. A lot of people like to ask a Cantonese boy like myself where the best Cantonese barbecue is. I think it's this duck that's hanging right here and the cha siu that's back there and also the siu yo, the crispy pork belly. They use the perfect cut for the perfect application. This place is called Shu Jiao Fu Zhou. It's a Fujianese style restaurant, so southeastern in China, where my mom is from. This is my favorite place to eat because it reminds me of being home. This is also the first place I take people whenever we're doing a Chinatown tour. It's very, very quiet. Most people eating here are solo. Everyone's just like eating a big plate of dumplings and a big plate of noodles, customizing it with like the vinegar in the sriracha bottle, or the sriracha in the sriracha bottle, or the dumpling sauce in the sriracha bottle. In my opinion, this is one of the best boiled dumplings in New York City. It's a pork and chive dumpling. It's pungent, it's aromatic, it's like the pork is perfectly fatty. This is definitely the must-go-to. And usually what happens is you douse it in dumpling sauce and sriracha and it's like really perfect. The second must-get is peanut butter wheat noodles. So they're not actually wheat noodles, these are egg noodles. On the bottom is a little bit of peanut butter and sesame style sesame sauce. Impossibly creamy and delicious. So simple and so quick. And I do like my sesame noodles with a little bit of heat so the sriracha is super, super clutch. Right now we're at 886, outstanding, no frills, Taiwanese food. So it takes a lot out of a little kid to move all the way out from Hong Kong to New York and very few restaurants sort of transport you back to that feeling of eating with your friends, drinking a lot of beer and being in that perfect nostalgic childhood space. 86 is one of those places. Every time I come here, it's better than the last. Chef Eric Pazi spent a long time trying to get the texture of this Taiwanese sausage right. Perfect bite on St. Mark's. <laughs> Eric makes probably the best chili oil in New York City, and that's the basis of the sauce for the dry noodles in with dry-aged beef fat. So it's ridiculously funky, a whole new meat dimension to chili oil. There is a way of describing the perfect fried rice. In Chinese, it's lili fun ming. Every single grain of rice is distinct. A lot of cultures have a pig's blood. This one, recently hit the menu, is pig's blood that is steamed with glutinous rice, similar to a rice cake in texture. 
The way I genuinely think of 86 is it's like a walk-centric restaurant. So a lot of the deliciousness comes from a dedication to walk technique. Basically, there's a walk. It's super, super hot. There's a bunch of oil inside. When you add the vegetables and all the other seasonings and things, you'll see a big splash of fire. There's a very rapid emulsification of all the oils and the water because of how intense that walk is. You can't do that in a pan. You would never be able to do that in a pot. This spring pea shoot is a really great example of that. Walk technique takes it to the next level. And I think it's like one of the best things on the menu. And it's low key. We're double chicken, please, in the Lower East Side. And this, very soon, in my opinion, is going to be the best bar in the United States. I love everything that the team behind this place does, and the drinks are ridiculously delicious. Awesome thing about Double Chicken Please is that it's a two-room concept. In the front room, a lot of the drinks are tapped and they're easy to drink. In the back room, it's a little bit more craft. And a lot of the signature cocktails of Double Chicken Please right now are inspired by savory dishes, one of which is inspired by red-eye gravy. So coffee is a big part of it, but the accentuating flavor notes are corn, butter, mushrooms, and prosciutto. That corn is so delicious. Oh my goodness. This one right here, it's called the Japanese cold noodle. It marries the flavor profile of a Chinese or Taiwanese cucumber salad with a pina colada. All in all, it makes for a ridiculously well-balanced and easy drink. This is my favorite drink in New York City. This is the Bacardi Legacy. It is one of the biggest cocktail competition in the world. If you are only going to get one drink in New York City, you would come to Double Chicken, please. A lot of the diasporas that are here in the city inform how Chinese people are making food. And that makes it particularly exciting to eat and cook Chinese food in New York today. <laughs>